Um, so like I said in the intro, the digital economy is a key pillar of the recently approved Economic Sustainability Plan, ESB, um, for short. Can you please speak about the ESB and the digital economy focus? And um, perhaps also, you know, tell us a bit more about the role of ministries and agencies of government in its implementation. Okay. All right. Over to you, sir. Okay. Thanks a lot, Omar. The, I think uh, just to save time, I, I take it that everyone sort of understands that our ESP is our response to uh, the economic crisis uh, caused by the pandemic. So our focus on the, on the digital sector is really because practically everything else we're doing centers around uh, uh, expanding our reach in the digital sector. So for example, financial inclusion is, is critical for us because we are uh, spreading our services, we're extending our services, social services, payments of um, cash transfers uh, to the poorest and most vulnerable, and all manner of other such uh, payments. We, we have to make these payments in the, far, in the farthest flung uh, places in Nigeria. And so we certainly need to expand our reach in order to do so. And of course, you know, this, this so, so of course technology is, is uh, critical to that. Secondly, e-commerce, you know, uh, education, and that's been made even, uh, it, it, it's even been made more important uh, during the lockdowns and all of that, and even now. So all of the e-education platforms that we have, and we're expanding that, government of course is funding a lot of that and collaborating with uh, the private sector to, to fund and to establish these platforms. And then remote work, you know, practically everything is now remotely done and we are all engaged in this uh, virtual, virtual everything, virtual. And just earlier on today, I did the virtual commissioning of an, of an MSME shared facility in Lagos, you know, sitting right here in my office. So this is getting all very nice and uh, comfortable. And so for us, the digital uh, space is absolutely important, which is why the focus was on the, the digital economy in the ESP. All ministries, I mean, really, uh, practically all of our ministries are involved because this is all of government. It affects everybody. It affects everything. And uh, But, of course, we're led by the Ministry of Communications and Digital Economy, which is a ministry fully devoted to uh, all of what we do in the digital space. But practically every ministry is involved. We also have NICTA, which is the agency responsible for information technology. Ministry of Education is, of course, very actively involved. You know, practically everyone is, 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 is involved in this. And, of course, the private sector. We absolutely can do nothing without the, 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 the private sector. And practically everything we're doing is to create the environment that would enable the private sector to take leadership and to do what it needs to do to expand the sector. So uh, so as not to take too much time, I, I think I'll just... Well said. Yes. Well said, sir. So, I, I mean, you just you basically said it. I like to say that the future is digital, distributed, and remote, and that future is now, which is basically what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And in terms of everyone, it's all hands on deck. And even if the, they're not, um, some ministries may not be at the forefront of pushing it, but they will also be impacted and need to get on board. Okay, thank you very much. Um, still with you, Your Excellency, I think this may be presumptuous of me, but I believe one of the things that probably played a role and culminated in the prioritization of the digital economy in the ESP was your famous Silicon Valley tech talk. Mm. And so, um, for those who do not know, in 2018, you led a delegation of government agencies, technology ecosystem stakeholders, and investors on a tour of Silicon Valley and Los Angeles. And one of the places your delegation visited was the Facebook campus in Silicon Valley. Um, you also undertook a similar tour of technology companies and startups in Lagos at about the same time. And I know my company, Angela, was one of those you visited. Um, so the question is, have there been any specific gains from these tours over the past two years? Mm. Well, there have been. There have been several. Uh, and I think both tours were extremely successful. Uh, in Silicon Valley, Nigerian startup companies got a chance to pitch uh, their products 
to tech sector investors, you know, so that was very good. We, in fact, before we left Silicon Valley, we, uh, one of our venture platforms, the, uh, one of our venture funds, the venture platform, actually was able to sign a, a transaction uh, worth about $10 million with the Nigeria US Council, even before we left. And of course, uh, since then, we've seen uh, tremendous activity. Of course, we were at, as you said, we were at uh, Facebook, the Facebook campus, which was you know, an absolute delight. We enjoyed uh, being around there and seeing all the excitement and you know, a great deal of energy uh, out there. It was, I think, particularly encouraging for many of our startups uh, seeing at close quarters what um, a, a comparable giant was doing. And I think that this was very, very helpful. Aside from that, um, we think that uh, the visits helped in showing our seriousness about um, the tech sector and, I, and also in, uh, to the entertainment uh, industry also, because we did quite a few meetings also with the entertainment, in, with the entertainment uh, industry. In fact, as of 28, end of 2018, 2019, we got in about 377 million US dollars in investments in, in the tech sector. So that, 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 that I thought was, a, you know, it was, was excellent. Of course, uh, it, it still scratches the surface when you consider the size of our economy and the size of the country. But there were very significant gains and we're extremely happy to have been able to do it. Of course, uh, two visits or one visit doesn't ever uh, answer the various, various, various challenges and issues and all that. So, but, but I think we started off you know, a series of interactions which have been very useful and will continue to, to engage. Thank you, sir. So I think we need more of these tours. Um, and but well, not to joke about it. It's it's interesting to hear the benefits you know gained from such tours. And maybe we should make that a KPI for every tour that people are going on. They should show us the money after <laughs> you know after the tour. But thank you for that. Talking about the private sector executing on some of the focus areas earlier mentioned, so skills, infrastructure, finance, I'd like us to speak a bit more about how easy it is to do that in Nigeria. And so, Your Excellency, this one's for you. Uh, Nigeria was recently applauded for its rise on the World Bank's ease of doing business rankings. Um, this has been credited largely to the efforts of the government through the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council, PEBEC, but a lot of businesses in technology and the creative industry still complain about facing difficulties in many areas. So for instance, recent regulations by the Nigeria Broadcasting Corporation are seen as anti-competition and a discouragement to investors in the industry. So how will the government work to fix these issues and then you know, and manage the peculiarities of the technology and the creative industries? So, yeah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I, I think that um, first, um, with regulation, you know, the, we're, we're dealing with um, uncharted territory because uh, quite a few of what we're seeing are entirely new. And I, I must say that the regulatory authorities have uh, done quite a decent work of trying to grapple with... Uh, the new the newness of, of some of what they see so so for example uh, we worked on uh, the uh, payment services licenses uh, you know they are licenses for fintech companies that are obviously because they are doing some banking type uh, work but they are not deposit banks they are not licensed deposit banks so we have to create some room for them. And what has happened is that the collaborative effort of government and the, and the tech sector worked on this, even the entertainment sector worked on this. We had a technology and creativity advisory group. And these are you know, uh, young um, entrepreneurs, uh, innovators, etc., who worked with us in the Industrial and Competitiveness Council to craft some of these uh, regulations and to think through some of the problems. So uh, I, the, the, that license was particularly important because 
it carved a uh, space for uh, space that was previously dominated entirely by deposit money banks. And of course, you know that I mean, they, they, they are the least uh, willing to have their lunch taken away from them. So they so really, this was quite this was quite good. And also, you know, there have been other ways in which, you know, obviously, by way of access to credit, we've worked very hard uh, to ensure that there is some access to credit for innovators. We've talked a bit about, in, uh, we've talked a bit about foreign investments in, in innovation in Nigeria. But more importantly, the work that um, the Bank of Industry is doing, the Bank of Industry has a fund, a tech fund. The Central Bank has also recently established a technology fund. And uh, the AFDB, we're working with the AFDB, they have a $500 million fund, which we are at the moment, where I think are the final stages of trying to bring that in, into existence. So there's quite a bit of activity around trying to ensure that there's access to funding while we're improving the business environment and improving the environment for, uh, for tech companies to operate. I think that uh, one, one thing that's certain is that there's change in the technology space is so rapid that, you know, you, you, you frequently find that the regulator is really just chasing after, after the, you know, after the innovations and all of that to see how best to regulate without stifling, uh, without stifling these companies. Regulation 9, the MBC code, which you referred to, is, is one which uh, obviously is now, well, there's, there, there's activity around trying to take a second look at it. Uh, the, there are those who say that it is uh, anti-competitive, uh, it is an anti-competition. Uh, there are those who say that it is pro-competition, by the way. Uh, so it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's one which I think we should take a second look at. Uh, basically what it says, as you know, is that, uh, you, that if, you have, uh, a, if you have a product, a, 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 you know, a, a, a licensed uh, product uh, for TV or film and all of that, you're expected to share it with, with, other, you know, uh, with other platforms. It's a it's one which uh, and I understand the argument of those who say that um, why should I that this is a violation of copyright and uh, and uh, intellectual property in other ways etc. Which is a very strong point and which and this is why I think that um, we ought to take a second look at it and see whether there are ways of moderating that to uh, to be more uh, acceptable and uh, so as not to stifle. Uh, the work of very, very hardworking, creative people who are creating content in film, creating content in music, etc. So that's, that's, that's where we are. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I, I want to particularly thank you for that. I mean, for committing to take a second look um, and to see where there are valid points. And um, we look forward to traction, not just on that, but on everything. And I guess one of the things you said, which is important, and I, I guess we should say this to the public, is we are really in uncharted territories. And so um, we should expect or we should show some patience and we should understand that we will have some TV issues. So we, we all have to work together. So thank you very much, sir, for that. And um, speaking about tech companies and um, the private sector, we are seeing top global players in the technology industry showing a lot more interest in Nigeria and Africa recently. So the likes of Facebook are increasing their investments, just like Sir Clegg said, and presence on the continent. What is the government doing to ensure that the business environment is ready to receive them, especially when we look at the human resource and skills required at the right scale? Yeah. On, secondly, it is important that Nigerian players are not swallowed by these giant companies. So how are we ensuring that these two core issues are not overlooked? Right. Yeah. Okay. I think that first uh, we are trying to work with uh, practically everyone who is interested in the Nigerian uh, digital sector. By way of preparation, one of the critical issues for us is, of course, our broadband infrastructure, improving our broadband infrastructure. And we've heard the very exciting stuff that Facebook is doing, uh, especially by way of the subsea cable that uh, has been launched. But we are also working, uh, we have a uh, Nigerian National Broadband Plan 2020 to 2025, 
recently launched mm -hmm. by the uh, Honourable Minister for Communications and um, a Digital Economy. There is a presidential committee which has just been inaugurated uh, to work on this. But the basic objective is to deliver uh, data download speeds of at the minimum of uh, 25, uh, uh, at least 25 um, megabits per second for urban areas and about 10 uh, uh, megabits per second for rural areas. So this, and, and of course, we're trying to cover about 90% of our, of our population as well in terms of just the reach. So these are, you know, these are broad objectives. And for us, uh, creating that infrastructure is crucial because really that's how everybody else will be able to operate. And we're happy to have, you know, to see the partnerships that we're getting from uh, Facebook and from some of the other uh, tech companies. In, in addition to that, you know, the state governments are working on ensuring that uh, it is cheap to lay uh, broadband networks. Of course, you know we're a federation, which means that the states have, you know, uh, considerable autonomy, especially regarding development control, etc. So if you're going to lay cables in a state, obviously, you know, they may want to charge and all that. But at the National Economic Council, which is a uh, which is a meeting of all the state uh, governors, uh, which I have the privilege of chairing every, every month. We've agreed that um, states will not uh, charge more than 145, uh, 145 naira per meter. You know, that will be the right of way charge. But we've gone beyond that, and several states have gone beyond that, to say we're not even going to charge anything at all. Because obviously it makes more sense uh, to have the broadband infrastructure laid than whatever little uh, in ge internally generated revenue that they can make. So we're at a point where many of the states are saying, let's just lay the, the infrastructure. So, um, so your excellency, Mr. Vice President, so from you as well, 60 yeah. seconds, your final thoughts on all of this, I'd okay. like to hear from you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. And, and I, I just want to say how, uh, Fantastic this afternoon has been. I am extremely excited. I wish this news of uh, Facebook opening his office had come just before the elections. We have improved our chances tremendously with young people and entrepreneurs and business. But this is all very good and we're so excited to hear all of what um, is possible and all of what is being done already. So uh, this is, and I think that this partnership is one that we must uh, continue to nurture and make sure that it benefits our people and of course benefits uh, uh, Facebook itself. And um, we're looking forward to working with your team, uh, with the Facebook team at all times. And um, where our doors are open, we're looking forward to uh, that, that interaction as much as we can. And um, we hope that uh, this will be the beginning of even more conversations and more action too. Thank you very much.